Hey guys, back with another video. The topic of discussion for today is Graves disease, also known as diffuse toxic goiter. Now, when we separate the words, the word diffuse it means widespread, toxic also means hyperactivity, and goiter, which is enlargement of the thyroid gland, which results in the swelling of the neck. Now, when we define the term all total, we can say that it's an autoimmune disease that affects the thyroid as antibody complexes are formed, which results in toxicity as there is an overactivity of the thyroid gland. Now, before anything, we need to know the hormones which are secreted by the thyroid gland. They are iodinated and non-iodinated. Now, in iodinated, we can see thyroxine, tetraiodothyroxine and triiodothyroxine which are T4 and T3 respectively, T3 being the more dominant one. Now when we talk about non-iodinated, they are basically two. First is calcitonin and second being somatostatin. Now, before anything, we also need to know about the physiological role of these hormones. First, they control the rate of the consumption of oxygen. Second, they generate heat in the body. Third, they promote the glucose utilization. And finally, they also promote lipolysis. For heart, they affect, uh, they give both the effects of chronotropic and inotropic. Now, chronotropic is change in the heart rate by the affecting electrical con conduction, and inotropic is the increase in the heart muscle strength. For contraction that is heartbeat now for GIT it affects as it stimulates both peristalsis and antiperistalsis which are the main motility in them and finally it also increases the blood count that is erythropoiesis Now, the reasons for them are actually idiopathic, which are not clearly known, but the disease is of hereditary predisposition. That is what is seen. Mostly in women, it is observed that when in the stages of pregnancy, lact lactation, or while premenstrual period it often affects and the predisposing factors are puberty neurotic constitution and cardio psychoneurosis the main the main factor which triggers is trauma which is the very main reason. Now, trauma can be direct or indirect. The direct being it affects the thyroid gland itself.
by acute or chronic diseases influenza angina rheumatism which is also an autoimmune disease tuberculosis and others now so second being affecting the hypothalamus pituitary area those diseases can be traumatic brain injury encephalitis and third being high dosage of iodine now the signs and symptoms that determine that it has this diagnosis first a graphic sign now basically we can say that usually the eye ball and the eyelid are usually in synchrony now when we usually move the eyeball towards down or we see anything down the eyeball the sorry the eyelid should move according to it but what happens is that it doesn't as a result the eye it looks like bulged out so the eyelid is actually lagging behind the eyeball so the eye looks protruded second a stelvic sign which is infrequent blinking third is morbius sign basically we can say that the guy he can't see his nose that is he has loss of ability to stare at close range and fourth is the rosenbach sign in which there are tremors in the eyelid now how do we determine which methods we use first is determination of the level of the antibodies with the receptors in tsh second is ultrasound to check the volume of the nodes third is ct or mri and fourth is laryngoscopy where a tube is inserted with a scope inside to check the neighboring organs around the larynx the only option available is surgery and to do that we determine the size it matters irrespective of the fact that how much thyrotoxicosis is spread throughout the body and the second being absence of conservative treatment that is drugs are not effective for more than 6 months irrespective of the fact the only option available is subtotal resection that is complete removal of the thyroid gland now if you like this video please hit the like button share and subscribe for more quality content thank you stay